modified. Now, this is an internal attack. Once the key is modified, any key will open this lock once that modified key is used. It's a big problem. The other problem is the external attack. This is called Insecurity Engineering 101. I spoke with a senior representative from ILOC yesterday afternoon in Finland for 45 minutes. Yeah, 3 in the morning. At 3 in the morning his time. Needless to say, he was really happy about the conversation. But, but he also, after telling Wired that this is stupid and that was their quote this morning, um, why not just leave the window open? That, that was their argument rather than attacking the key or the lock. Good argument. So finally, when I got done with this, with this fellow at ILOC, he basically confirmed all the vulnerabilities, says, well, we fixed all those. When can we get new samples? Couple months, they'll be available. So it's a very responsible company. They're working on it. But my problem is once you bypass the electronic credentials, the Egyptian pin tumbler lock from 4,000 years ago is frankly more secure. <laughs> this, this lock, the eye lock, has one small pin that is their entire security once you bypass their credentials, which we'll demonstrate in the video. So we showed the Egyptian lock. There's the eye lock key. There's an Egyptian key. So, let's run the video. We've identified four operating states for this lock. Uh, and, and this cutaway is a standard cylinder. It has not been modified to defeat its security. So in the first instance, in stage one, the key is inserted into the lock. This is what we call a charging and wake-up stage, and which includes authentication of the credentials in the key. The second stage uh, is a function change which takes the motor from generating current to run the processor to spinning the motor in order to turn a primary gear in order to set the mechanical system so that as the key travels through the keyway it lifts up a little nylon pin as can be seen which actually lifts a metal pin which allows the cam to turn by the action of the key. So this is stage three. In stage four, which we call a mechanical reset, the key is removed and the entire system will mechanically reset back to idle state. You see the little lever drops, that's the actuating charging lever, and so now this lock is back to its normal locked state. So what we're seeing here is a valid credentialed key with a modified tip. So the lock is set, it is not mechanically reset so that any key or even a screwdriver can be used to lift that little nylon pin which lifts the metal locking pin to allow the cam to turn. This is a serious security vulnerability in our view in this cylinder. In this sequence we're going to demonstrate the external attack on this iLock cylinder. This attack it, we believe is more serious it requires a slight modification that can be conducted externally while the lock is mounted in the door uh, to the actuating lever. And once that's modified, the lock is set by the use of any authenticated key. Once an authenticated key is inserted and removed in this lock, as in proper use, this lock can be operated by a simulated key an authenticated key, a non-authenticated key, a simulated blank, or even a screwdriver. So we'll demonstrate, here's a simulated brass key that opens this lock. And again, a screwdriver can be used to lift that little nylon pin, which will in turn lift the metal pin that moves out of the gate of the locking cam and allows it to turn. So 
as again, it's a very, very clever design, but as you can see, they never ever contemplated this really simple attack. Okay, lock number three, Kaba in sync. It's an RFID based lock with a plastic key that looks like a key. It's very clever. There's a lot of them around. They're used on military bases, churches, lots of apartment complexes. So, it, Matt? I was just going to say um, a couple years back, we presented a bypass for the code locks, the CL5000. It's a very si similar attack that you're going to see here. Okay. So, again, this has wide application both in the military and civilian sector. Uh, Kaba is a really good company. They ought to know better than this. Here's how this lock works um, there's a, there's a, there's a locking cam that, that has to be re, re withdrawn electrically <clears throat> and then the key mechanically turns the, uh, the cam, okay? So, the in-sync meets the paper clip. This is the Saflock in-sync deadbolt. It's an electronic lock, self-contained, battery operated. It uses a small RFID tag that is inserted like a regular key to unlock, unlock the dead room. We're going to now use the wire to unlock a piece of wire the dead room. The USB port. And we can also lock it back. They, they forgot about the tolerances around the USB port. So you stick a wire into the lock, you open it. End of story. The next example, brilliant, isn't it? Remember, you got to vote. Yeah. Okay, the next example is the AMSEC ES1014 consumer safe, in quotes. Really clever design. Nice lock, okay? Um, it's consumer level, about a hundred bucks, electronic keypad. AMSEC doesn't make it, they import it from China, okay? And they told me in customer service, they don't test them either. AMSEC, AMSEC really, really knows better. So, here's the problem. There's a reset button, the way this works, okay? But the reset, oh, you're all laughing. What? Yeah, the reset button, it's locked in the save. Okay, so what would be the problem? Oh, the problem is a Slim Jim fashioned from a hanging file folder. The, the metal in the hanging file folder. This is really, really brilliant. Okay, and here's the problem. Here's the photograph of the Slim Jim and the video you're going to see. Once you tap the reset button, you key in a new combination and you open the safe. Okay. Now we're going to show how to bypass the security of this container with a piece of metal that's used for hanging file folders. We're going to take that piece of metal, uh, just like a Slim Jim, for opening a car. We're going to insert it at the top of the door. We're going to flip it around and we're going to press the reset button we're going to reprogram a new combination to the keypad and we're going to open the safe. You just have to reach for the reset, that's it. And the safe is open. Okay, I think the worst part on this one is once you set a new combination, you're going to leave the, the owner of the safe locked out. He won't be able to open well, the safe. Unless he has a file folder. Well, <laughs> this, well. Is, this, is, this is so incompetent design, it's unbelievable. But here's number five. This is the best, perhaps. You guys are going to have to vote. The BioLock 333. And by the way, 
Um, the company in New York that's selling a lot of these, Brickhouse Security, we've dealt with them for a long time. They're a very large surveillance equipment man of, or vendor for law enforcement in the United States and for corporate. Um, they carried these locks until last week. <laughs> They're issuing a press release on Monday and putting up a blog post that's saying, they, first of all, the company wouldn't respond to them. They're returning all the locks and protecting all their customers. And they would urge all the other vendors in the country to do the same thing. So, oh no, no, the, really. the com I think the company's running. Not, not Brickhouse, but the, the folks that are selling this. So, watch this. Toby, describe the lock really quickly so we don't run out of time. Uh, well, the lock, when I saw this lock, I really, I really thought that the lock, it really looks great. We have the lock right here if you guys want to take a look at it. Uh, the packaging of this lock is amazing. Uh, it's a do-it-yourself project, basically. Uh, not is, it's not easy to install. Uh, very convenient because it uses fingerprint as, 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 as a key. Yeah, when, when I called customer service and says, what's the security of the lock? They said, the fingerprint. Well, oh, it's a fingerprint. It's a fingerprint. It's a fingerprint lock. Okay, $200 <laughs> for this lock. They're selling a lot of them. Uh, the problem is they never met a paper clip. Yeah, they have a bite. <clears throat> uh, behind the cover, you have a, a bypass cylinder, which is uh, what we call a dimple key. So if, even if you see the key, you say, well, this key yeah. is not easy to replicate. Right. You, you feel very comfortable. Uh, you can program up to 99 uh, fingerprints. Yeah. Uh, very convenient. You know, you don't have to carry keys. It's a self-contained uh, uh, unit with the batteries inside. Even has a remote control. So you can open the, lo the door with a remote control uh, from the inside. Okay, watch this. This is a demonstration of the BioLock Model 333 fingerprint reader lock. This is a biometric lock import to the United States that's being sold by a number of different companies. Uh, ostensibly is secure. We did not analyze the fingerprint reader or its security or design. However, we did look at the mechanics. This uh, fingerprint lock has a bypass cylinder, it's a dimple lock, and uh, there's a magnetically closed cover to allow access with a key. The lock is packaged uh, quite nicely. The uh, lock can be programmed with one or more master fingers, and those master keys, so to speak, uh, will then be used to authorize individual users. Um, let's go ahead and demonstrate how this lock works in normal mode, and then we'll demonstrate the insecurity engineering of this lock. The lock is woken up. The reader illuminates. Blue light comes on, indicating an authorized uh, fingerprint and the uh, lever handle can be turned uh, to withdraw the bolt and then the system resets as you heard and now the lock is in its uh, lock state. The bypass cylinder works in the same way if for some reason the fingerprint reader doesn't work. The problem with this lock design is so elementary that frankly it defies belief. Um, all that is needed to open this lock is a paper clip. The paper clip is inserted into the keyway, the lock is open. And we'll do a macro shot of that, but what you see. Okay. So what, what lessons have we learned? Again, cleverness does not equal security. Locks require both mechanical and security engineering. Patents do not guarantee security, nor do the standards. Very quickly, an industry update. Um, the industry is paying attention. A lot of manufacturers now are making anti-bump um, hardware, and they're also very seriously looking at their electromechanical locks. So we'd be glad to visit with everybody. 
Um, afterwards, in the, uh, in the, I guess, uh, another room, if you have any questions, we hope you enjoyed it this year. Who, okay, what lock wins? The dumbest. The finger 